being here. We really appreciate everybody joining us. Um, there will be copies of everything that we talk about that you can download, especially the recording here. We'll have a couple polls and some handouts to share while we're going through everything. Um, but really looking forward to this. This is a first time uh, for me to have both uh, one of my public sector uh, counterparts and one of my commercial counterparts from Credit Point to join us simultaneously. Uh, but I think it's important to talk about uh, what we can do with Cradle Point in partnership with RCN on how do we deploy failover and primary connectivity and what are some of the endpoints that we utilize for that? And more importantly, what's what's all the jazz around it? Is it really worth the hype? And, and the answer for me is, uh, of course, but let's proof in the pudding, right? So we're going to get to work here momentarily. Um, we're going to go through the slide deck with you. Uh, first and foremost, I'd love to introduce the whole team. I'll save myself for last, but uh, Osa, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Thank you, Ben. Uh, my name is Osa Jennings, and I'm an inside sales account manager at Create a Point for uh, the public sector. I uh, support Texas uh, agencies and Oklahoma agencies. Mike? Mike? Thanks, Osa. Uh, I'm, Mike, I'm Mike Leiden, uh, regional sales manager with Cradle Point. I've been here about almost six years now, uh, live and based in the Dallas market. And I cover commercial, which encompasses uh, enterprise and small, medium-sized businesses. Yeah. And Happy myself? No, hey, Mike, we appreciate you coming. Um, I'm, I'm Ben White, regional sales manager for the West. So basically West of the Mississippi uh, for strategic. So I support both Mike and Oso anytime um, it's something like this that may provide uh, some topology that might concern folks, right? Being able to put the right pieces together for all the things that RCN has done. And if you ever want to know, we, we do have a, a webinar archive on our YouTube channel. You can go back and look at all the great things that we do from turnkey appliances to public Wi-Fi to uh, security-based initiatives for um, our commercial partners. So with that being said, we're really looking forward to uh, and, and sharing some of the things that we have today. Um, as we go forward, feel free to utilize the chat um, and, and ask questions, or if you have comments, concerns, or ask uh, for, for additional information that we can share after the fact, uh, we'll be doing that. There are some polls uh, that we'll have throughout this. We'd love to get your feedback. It actually helps us do our job better and, and make these webinars better. Uh, and then some handouts. Today's agenda, just kind of looking at the common connectivity challenges faced by small, medium businesses, or even you know small, medium-sized public sector entities, departments. They run like businesses for the most part, right? Mission-critical connectivity, needing to stay up and running, responding to constituents. So whether it's point of sale or, or our highly secure uh, enterprise or corporate uh, documents or, or back-end information that we don't want folks to have, like the MGM piece that just happened a few weeks ago, or um, some of the things that we've seen on the government side with hacks. Cradle Point allows us not only a, a solid connection, uh, but also a secure connection we can count on for both sides of that coin. Another thing we want to look like or look at is what is FWA versus a traditional wireline? Now, FWA means a lot of things to a lot of folks, but for us, fixed wireless access. I don't care what carrier you have at the end of the day, it's Cradle Point and RCN deploying solutions that provide fiber-esque speeds in a cellular or wireless type footprint or something that works together in combination. Also looking at what the difference between that fixed access and what a failover. So when are we used as primary and when would we be used as a secondary? And how to leverage our RCNs manage support or our knock via our tech lab team to help deploy that. And then finally, we'll end with some Q and A's. Poll one, help us out here if you can, guys. Where did you hear about this webinar? Uh, you'll see the poll book uh, jump up on here in momentarily. Megan will get that running, uh, but you'll be able to click on it. There's four there. So did you hear about us via email from an RCN rep, a friend or coworker, social media, or, or you know? or something other, I guess. Put that in the chat if there's somewhere that we don't have here. Awesome, it looks like most people heard from a friend or coworker, a couple emails, so that's good. That, that's, a, that's almost never picked, so that's funny. Most, most uh, email ends up as a spam, get out of my way, I don't wanna talk to you, but that's great. Social media, that's a good one. Um, if you're this person that selected social media, could you type in whether or not 
you saw that on LinkedIn or Facebook, I, I, I'd be uh, happy to know that for future purposes. But we'll kick forward and, and keep moving forward. Um, let's look at the, some of the common connectivity challenges, right? Faced by small and, and medium-sized businesses or small, large, and even medium-sized, uh, you know, public sector or, or state or nonprofit agencies as well, right? Some of the challenges we see, uh, high costs, infrastructure limitations, the ability to actually install equipment, right? Maybe you don't have access to your roof or external antennas become a problem. Lack of scalability, right? Um, how, do, how do I take something and move it to all my sites across the geographical area? If I only have one or two network people back at headquarters, right? Lengthy install times, how do we manage that? Lack of technical support. Not everybody we do fell over for are IT geniuses. Some of them barely, you know, their state of knowing technology is plugging their cradle point or plugging a, a computer in or, you know, something of the sort. So very limited in their actual ability, but know that they need that extra support. And then that reliability issues. When they do buy something um, that's not enterprise grade, that's not built uh, to provide that mission critical always on connectivity, uh, wh what do we do there? Um, also, on your side, what do you think of, of these six, right, of these six pieces that you hear most from your customers, where do you think their limitations or concerns uh, about moving to a fixed primary solution or even a failover solution, where would you say that's pointed at? Um, I, I feel like the fixed wireless access term is just like a, it's a new term what Creative Point and RCN have been doing for a really long time. But what we have right now is really an environment where we have um, the cellular networks are built off to where we can have a primary or a backup connectivity failover. Um, I, I feel like especially lengthy install times. Um, I can imagine that applying to the retail side, that on Mike's side as well. Um, but even government agencies need uh, pop-up connectivity, uh, emergency management. Um, it could be natural disaster, and we need something very quickly. That's that's a huge concern for government customers. Yeah, and I know. So on the primary side, just I know you have some experience deploying some stuff alongside me and and, and our teams that cover the you know that Texas Tola region. When we talk primary internet over cellular, what are some of the speeds you're seeing in, in, in an average, right? We we all know about the, the glorious LinkedIn posts of showing two gigs down, and that's great. But what are you typically seeing out in the field? So, um, yeah, we definitely, I have been part of some of those glorious LinkedIn posts. And in the metro areas, we have seen wireless speeds over a gig in some of the Texas metro areas that we do support. Um, but still, I feel like realistic uh, speeds we are seeing on 5G is uh, several hundred megabytes per second downlink. Um, and there's a lot of stuff you can do with that. Yeah. So Mike, on your side, you know, focusing more on the commercial side. So on the public sector side, the contracts and the, everything that's needed to go from just deploying it to actually buying the equipment it's a little di different than commercial, but not entirely different. What, what, what would you say are your, the limitations or challenges your, your customers see? Well, I would tie um, uh, lengthy install times with the infrastructure limitations um, because I have customers that can't get service or it's just really high cost to, to bring service to the door, basically. And so they're looking at uh, us for primary. Um, and, and there's, you know, when you're waiting a long time for a circuit, you know, when you've got a, you've got a, a schedule to keep, uh, for example, in, in the case of retail, um, I've had several customers that had to have a store open by a certain date and they knew they weren't going to be able to get the uh, service at the door. So they used us um, to give them the primary connectivity until the, uh, uh, the circuit is in place. And sometimes they would put us in the back, back up uh, mode then at that point um, or augment what they have today. Yeah, no, I, I think I, I follow both your guys' suits, so no need to uh, you rehash that. You know, The only thing I would say that has that impressed me more and more over the last two years of being an, a deployment partner instead of just a, a cradle point uh, rep myself is I, the speed and latency and jitter right, ha, has exponentially increased in the capabilities that cradle point brings to the table across the carrier uh, field, right? We we have several that we know are, are there whenever we need them. 
Um, but honestly, I've seen stuff work from the middle of nowhere, Alaska, to the middle of the desert in Nevada, uh, to downtown, worst congested environment you could think of um, there in New York City. And every time we've deployed, whether it's as a primary uh, source or as a failover source, what CradlePoint's able to bring to the table and what our team has been able to install, deploy, and help manage, um, I, I, I'm just more and more uh, surprised about what we can do and, and looking forward to seeing what the next couple of years has to offer. I uh, I won't say fiber is dead, but I, I definitely think more and more net new buildings, wireless WAN connectivity is going to be uh, the way of the future for a lot of folks where that infrastructure costs and the waiting for things to get last miled in. I just feel like that's where CradlePoint and, and RCM partnering together has allowed for folks to get connections that they may have not had three or four years ago. So with that being said, uh, let's talk about primary versus that traditional wireline going to what I just mentioned, right? So what, what are some things that we know about the wireline, right? Uh, they're prone to outages. Uh, they often require expensive installation. If you've put fiber in lately, you know that, that, that fiber or just coax, it's, it's not cheap. Uh, whether it's over the wire or, or in, the, in the ground, it's not cheap. So whether we're trenching or, or laying it out over poles, uh, we have found that that cost, because wireline companies are losing uh, more and more business to cellular, they're increasing their install and uh, just operational costs more than we've ever seen, right? Something that used to come included with your internet service is now something that you have to pay extra for, and you may have to wait a while to get it done. There's zero mobility outside of that deployed area. So unless you have some sort of cradle point back PCN solution, um, or you have some sort of um, other mobility asset that you can deploy, you're locked into that geo area where that fiber terminates and as far as your APs can reach, that's as far as you're gonna get. Uh, you know, difficult and costly to extend that coverage, right? I just talked about that PCN. Not that it's difficult on the cradle point side, but coming in, deploying a, a fiber or terrestrial system, a standard normal internet type solution, and then trying to augment that so you can reach as far as you possibly can and or have mobility involved. Uh, whether we're talking about the VPN architecture, which CradlePoint can now help with, whether we're talking about the security support on the edge structure, which through that Aircom solution, CradlePoint can now help with. There's so much more you have to add to that fiber line and uh, in, in that topology on that local site. It does create some complications that, um, depending on the size of your company or, or your budget, could, could create issues. Wireless helps us with a lot of that. Also, on your side, when we talk about wireless, what are some of the things or, or key things you like about wireless or that you see your customers kind of picking wireless as wh whether it's an augmented failover or FWA as a primary? Um, I think that the day one deployment with the connected to the lengthy install times is, is huge. Um, working in the public sector, we work with a lot of law enforcement agencies and they are on the move. Um, the the point you have here, the zero mobility outside of the deployed areas is huge for us. Um, you can't, I mean, a police officer is not gonna stand in one spot. He needs connectivity on the go, um, connectivity in the vehicle, connectivity in the command trailer, pop-up connectivity um, at, at a crime scene when, whenever is needed. So um, that is definitely a, a huge thing for us. Yeah, Mike, on your side, um, you know, thinking about wireless and what your customers, I know you and I have several mm -hmm. Several customers, some are fixed, some are retail, uh, so on and so forth. But where do you see wireless being the ticket for them and why, why the conversations seem to always go uh, in a great direction for us? Yeah, it's it, a lot of it is, is speed to market, right? Being able to get up, uh, get a store online quickly or, or a, uh, even an office, a fixed uh, office location. Or um, I've seen it where they had to move locations and shut down quickly and they want to open up another office more quickly so they, if they can easily move the equipment, which is, makes it very flexible and, and scalable too. Um, the other thing that I, I was thinking about is, you know, when you were talking about bringing fiber to the building, a lot of times they tell them they have, they have uh, you know, have multiple carriers, but I've had customers where the, the fiber gets caught or gets cut accidentally and all the carriers go down. Um, so this is a great solution for that, you know, to be able to back that up. And then another instance is a lot of our customers use us to augment their SD-WAN solutions. Yep. So if the SD-WAN goes down, they still have a path back uh, back to the data center. So that's where yeah, I no. see them. Uh, those. 
Go ahead. Sorry, Mike. No, no, no. I'm sorry. There's a delay on my side, but uh, no, I, I agree with you. And, and I'm ex just excited there, you know, the SD WAN solution, you know, I think the one thing I don't want to miss in talking, especially with you two both being on the call, the software SaaS services that Cradle Points added to their, you know, they have those vehicles, right? We have our branch series, we have our wideband adapter series, we got our mobility series, our IoT series. Those are all great pieces of hardware. And a lot of folks will convince you uh, that you can go anywhere for that hardware. As long as it takes a SIM card and connects to the tower, what do you got? And what I would say is, where FWA with Cradle Point is a game changer, whether it's the always on connectivity, the SD WAN integrations, the security solutions that back Cradle Point up on the software dashboard side. So whether it's management of the network or securing the network, Cradle Point has more built into their solution than any solution I've seen on the market. And I, I think that's where our customers, not only is it an always on wireless connection, it, it's an enterprise grade security backed connection that provides the same visibility you would expect from those enterprise uh, fixed solutions, if you will. So no, that, I, I think that's great. We're gonna move to the next slide here. Let's just make sure we have any uh, questions. Nope, no questions on this side. So we're gonna keep moving. What are some of those endpoints uh, that we have in fixed wireless? Mike, would you mind talking about some of the, uh, you know, those fixed wireless as primary solutions that you guys deploy? I think we, I think that's an E3000. Uh, and I know you yeah. guys have an 1855 to talk about today too. Yeah, so so as you can see, uh, that is a 3000. Um, that is our, our flagship, I guess, router, um, which um, is very powerful. It, it comes with a, you know, a, a modem on board, but it also gives you the flexibility to ask second modem so that you can have diverse carriers and be able to fail over seamlessly between carriers and it can also pick the strongest uh, signal when you first set it up, which is which is very uh, nice because of the automation from that perspective. And, and then uh, behind that, you can see two uh, what we call adapters. That okay. All of our adapters are white, and they serve up the WAN link for the most part. Uh, the one on the left is is meant for internal uh, inside buildings, um, but the new one on the right, the 1855, is meant to be put up on a rooftop and on a mast and just above the roof line. And that will give you the absolute best connectivity uh, and signal strength um, from the rooftop because it's outside and it's, it is uh, IP rated for the outdoors. So it doesn't need to be in a NEMA enclosure or anything like that. I have yeah. one customer in the retail space that uh, is deploying um, the earlier version of the 1855 uh, up on the roof connected to the 3000 within their closets and that's backing up their SD-WAN solution. Um, and, and so it's a very powerful solution uh, from a, from a uh, you know, fixed wireless access uh, perspective. And they're getting them up, they're rolling them out pretty quickly. And, and we're talking about a thousand sites here in the retail yeah. space. So it's it's a pretty uh, pretty strong solution, so. No, no, and I, I think uh, following following suit with that, you know, what what I really like about it, right? Uh, let's Let's rewind two years, right? Two years ago, uh, we, we didn't have outdoor adapters that ran over PoE or ethernet. And so two things I've seen Cradle Point bring to market that have allowed RCN uh, and our customers to just have better wireless deployments is we're getting rid of the SMA noise. Uh, that doesn't mean we don't love uh, external antennas where, where they're appropriate, but some of these retail buildings, if we're in a mall or if we're in a, in a large government facility, you know, we've got more than a hundred foot to go and a hundred foot on SMA cable is never a good thing, right? We don't want to go over that if possible, even with the, the shielded LMR 400 or something like that. It, it just starts creating more degradation than it's worth. And people don't get the end result they were hoping for. And what these adapters allow us to do is run that all over ethernet, extending that reach. And then also in, in my opinion, uh, just making that connection to that local tower that much crisper and that much cleaner. So again, adding that performance uh, that, that we've been talking about providing. So I, I love those adapters, especially when they're deployed as a captive modem solution. Uh, one thing uh, before we skip this, there is a download for our FWA flyer if you want to click on that. Uh, I forgot to mention that when it popped up, but Mike, back to you, sir. Yeah, I was just going to say um, one thing I didn't mention is, uh, is the 1855, which is the one on the right. And by the way, that's laying down flat. It actually stands up. And, and it's a very small form factor. There are two antennas that come out of the bottom and two that stick up 
on top. And that connects to the, uh, um, uh, the 3000 or any other router or switch for that matter uh, via Ethernet. So the limitation is about 300 feet, right? Because you're limited by that. What I've seen uh, as a benefit of you know, running Ethernet is um, a lot of companies don't own their buildings yep. uh, or the space that they're in. So they can't, they can't just go ahead and punch a hole through the, to, through the roof, right? So a lot of our customers have actually been able to go out through the wall and then up, you know, externally, which allows them to do it more quickly. They don't need as many approvals. Um, right. That's just one thing that I've learned um, working with, uh, you know, the, the the outdoor antenna or the outdoor uh, modem versus, you know, connecting to the indoor. So, and and the other thing that's great about it is the PoE requirement. It's only 30 watts on this 1855. The predecessor to that was, uh, I believe, it was 80 or 90 watts. Um, so. You know, it, it's got a smaller form factor and uh, lower power requirements to be able to deploy it. Yeah, I think no. we have even by like over 70% reduction in housing size. So huge difference yeah. right there. Yeah. yeah, it means we can install it more places now too. Um, you know, we actually have folks who are in a couple of mall settings that are set back and we, they don't even have a back door, right? They're in the middle of the mall, if you will, or like, you know, if you've got the big mall, they're in the middle. and. They don't have access to an outdoor. They don't have a bay. They have a common bay that everybody has to use. And we've been able to formulate a plan using the 1855 in building and, and, and setting it somewhere in a back warehouse or whatnot and getting that better signal using that 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 300 foot to the best of our ability um, and just getting a much better throughput signal strength and quality out of that than a traditional uh, you know lower gain antenna solution would. But no, no, very, very good stuff. Um, here's that 1855 series that Mike was talking about. Uh, it is laying on its bottom. What, what you're seeing there um, for, for a lack of better way are, are the antennas and the Ethernet ports, right? So it is a waterproof, ruggedized solution that's designed, designed to uh, be installed outside and live outside. Uh, so really allows you to put this endpoint where it's needed most for the best signal possible, uh, despite what your outdoor conditions may be. Then uh, some of the fixed wireless access questions, if you yeah. want to cover them now oh, or okay. if you want to do them later. Uh, I think we no, got no, yeah, let's let's look at what we've got. I was still on the handouts page, so thanks for the call out. Uh, yeah, so no we got, uh, what are the cybersecurity measures, uh, what cybersecurity measures should businesses implement to protect their data when using the internet for operations. So uh, that is going to be a your mileage may vary conversation. And we'd love to have that offline. Um, but whether it's CP secure threat management that comes included uh, or, or built into the Cradle Point platform as a head end unit, the branch or mobility or IoT series, or you're leveraging uh, the new relationship with Aircom uh, as a true um, edge security uh you know uh, packet inspection solution that actually decompresses and looks at things before they ever reach your internal network there's so many different ways to go about that whether you're using cradle point centric or you're actually uh cradle point integrated so whether you're integrating into an existing security platform or using one of the great tools uh that cradle point brings to the table um but we would be happy to have that conversation and go through what those measures are um, but they are very differential depending on what your individual needs are. Uh, are there any compensation packages for uh, participant? Mm, if you're if you're asking about are we giving anything away, I'll leave that to Megan, but I don't think we are. Um, however, I will let her answer that if if I'm wrong there. Um, let's go back through. Are there any security measures to implement? Again, um, there is a very robust catalog of security uh, measures built in. So you have out of the gate security measures, whether it's content filtering uh, built in the advanced solution or it's deep packet inspection or it's every VPN IPsec uh, type security model, uh, whether we're doing static IPs as your as your infrastructure or we're going down to a cradle point centric NCX uh, solution for that visibility piece. So NetCloud Exchange as, as a VPN architecture appliance. Those are all possibilities and all of them give you a different flavor of what that security uh, and protection would look like. What are the advantages and disadvantages of dedicated fiber optic internet for connections for businesses? Oh yeah, so we kind of hinted on this earlier and I, this is definitely where I think OSM Mike's experience comes into play. So 
I'll let them answer from their own words here in a moment. But here's where I've seen the advantages and disadvantages from fiber optics. First of all, fiber optic is not cheap anymore. Um, it's never really been cheap, but it's more expensive now than I've ever seen it. And I've been doing this type of work for over 15 years. Um, the trenching costs alone, especially in major metros, not only do you have the cost of uh, the actual labor and, and equipment and all those things, um, but the cost of that fiber optic seems to be going up more and more. So there's that piece, but then there's the operational downtime, right? We have, uh, I know Mike and I have customers like this, and I know Osa and I too on the public sector. I have customers who have ordered their fiber optic in large metros nine to 12 months ago and who are waiting for facilities to come online. And in the meantime, Mike and I have deployed uh, wireless connections in those sites and are providing 700 by 150 down, right? So 700 down by 150 up with low jitter and low latency, well-placed for VoIP, well-placed for streaming, uh, for over 200 plus clients, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, more clients than that if we do uh, a, a differential uh, dual modem solution. And we're coming in and providing them better than what they could have got from their local fiber provider, right? Who only maybe gives a 50 by 50 circuit. Um, and our downtime is drastically less, right? The downtime on fiber could be weeks, uh, if more. Um, and then the other piece that I would say there is that your ability to affect and or fix it over the air, you, you don't have a lot of control over your fiber. We have a massive amount of control over your cellular interface whether it's uh, using dual SIM slots for failover um, as a active passive or using dual modem, dual carrier connectivity as, as a redundancy for an active active or active passive uh, redundant solution. So we have a lot more um, flexibility and uh, accessible uh, throughput on a cellular wireless backhauled or FWA solution than I've ever seen on a fiber solution. And the last thing I'll share before asking Osa or Mike to jump in is typically in today's world, fiber all runs through the same trench in most metros. So when one goes right. out and you're paying for redundant fiber, chances are that secondary fiber that you just paid for is also out. And so you've actually pigeonholed yourself into a solution that leaves you extremely vulnerable. If you're really concerned about outages, dual fiber is not the way to accomplish that. And that's where I think a failover solution would be the better augmented or, uh, or secondary solution. If you are going to have fiber, I would suggest redundancy and fell over to cellular, not secondary fiber running in the same trench. Osa or Mike, anything to add on your side, starting with Osa? You definitely touched on a, a lot of key points there, Ben. Um, and I think what you're saying there, uh, it can definitely also be a compliment. Make sure you don't have everything in one trench. If there is a fiber cut, if uh, if there is a major construction going on and they, they cut the fiber lines in the ground, you'll likely won't have any type of backup or redundancy. Um, it's unlikely that the cellular network would go down completely, but with a crater point router, you can always just uh, put another SIM in there if, uh, if one carrier would start to experience some issues. So um, I thought you provided a, a great summary there, Ben. Um, but yeah, definitely. Um, I would just say that in, in, even for the advantages with uh, a fixed uh, wired access, still it could be a compliment to have a, a cellular backup as well. Mike? Yeah, agreed. Yeah, no, Mike, I was, you... I was, I was glad... Go ahead. No, I was just saying, what, what were your thoughts? Um, I was just going to plan uh, what Osa just said is, is uh, you know, being able to have diverse carriers, not in the fiber, but in the, the cradle point, which you know, is, is wireless fiber for the most part, right? So you're not digging any trenches. And and if uh, a cell cellular signal goes down, the other one can certainly pick it up. Um, and, and so there's still some speed there. And you never have to worry about cut uh, cutting of fiber. So, yeah. So somebody asked a, a question about speed. And uh, forgive my spelling, uh, trying to do too many things at one time. But I wanted to answer that because I think it's important. You know, in metro environments, uh, like Osa had mentioned earlier, her and I have both been involved uh, with things in the uh, Dallas and Houston and Oklahoma markets where we're seeing gig, gig and a half, uh, up to two gigs down by 500 gigs up uh, with very low latency on the jitter side. 
as well as on the latency side. So both your latency and jitter well within lines of, of what you would expect on a fiber circuit. Now you're always gonna have a little bit of fluctuation there, uh, but due to the persistent connect and, and priority and preemption that we see with so many carriers, a lot of the jitter, like a 12 mega, you know, 12 jitter um, that you would see on cellular, you're not gonna notice that from an actual usability standpoint. I think you'd be very impressed by what that delivers. Um, in a rural environment, um, which Mike and I have a couple of retail locations we work on that aren't necessarily rural, but aren't in 5G markets. So even in a non-5G market utilizing the solutions, we're seeing 75 to 100 down by 25 to 50 up uh, with an uptime of 99.5 or better. And that 0.5 is usually due to power outages or, or just local weather conditions that affect everything. So when we see a, a, a regional outage um, you know, there's only so much you can do if there's no gas in the tank. Uh, but th that, those are my, my personal, what I've seen. And I run and operate accounts from uh, the New Jersey border all the way to California. So I've, I've really seen a, a lot. Um, and that's my personal experience. I'd love to introduce you to folks if you would like to have a one-on-one -on -one meeting where we could actually show you what we're getting at a couple of our referenceable customer sites. Um, anything to add there, Mike, also before we go to the next slide? I was just thinking of an example. I have uh, one customer that deployed, um, uh, you know, along the southern states, and, and the reason why they deployed is for backup is during, uh, you know, natural disaster events. Um, usually, when a natural disaster hap happens, the first thing they they bring up is power, but then cellular network comes back online faster than you know uh, uh, fiber. And so they're they're online and they've done that as as a backup solution uh, during those instances. So uh, I think it's a very powerful solution. And again, multiple carriers um, can do the job um, and be able to uh, give you that fixed wireless access um, to support your organization. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, also, anything to add? I'm going to move to the next slide. But why um, do you do that? We might have lost you on camera, Ben. I'm not sure if you had a little bit of a failover event there, but <laughs> I think we lost you on camera. I'm having some bandwidth issues. I just I just turned on my cradle point, actually. So, gotcha. Well, I have a yeah. mine ready right here as a as a remote worker if uh, if needed. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So going over to failover, um, which I'm doing right now. Um, so going over to failover solutions, everything that we've just stated kind of kind of falls in line uh, with that fixed wireless. So there's not much more to add uh, here. Um, actually, I'll show you my failover device right now. I think I just came back online. Uh, that is my mobile pop-up network kit that has a mobility router from CradlePoint uh, installed. But uh, that that's what I'm using to our fiber just let go literally on this call. So that's that's what I'm working on uh, via. So my whole point to that is much of what we've already talked about, um, it's the same, it's copy. The difference from a failover solution is the cost and uh, the complication or, or, of deployment is much, uh, much smaller, right? So first of all, failover data, you're not paying for hundreds of gigs at a time or an unlimited plan. You're paying for the four or five gigs of insurance uh, that you might need during a failover event. So we can look at your, let's say you have a Meraki system that lets you know what your current uptime is. And you know exactly what month to month, my average uptime is 95%. I need somebody to help me cover that other 5%. We can work with your carrier partner of choice or through our, uh, through our relationships here at RCM, provide a data plan of choice that best fits the site that you're going into and help choose a plan that best fits your needs whether it's one gig, five gigs or more. And the failover equipment is the exact same equipment that we'd use on the, uh, on, on the other piece of it. So with that being said, just moving forward, what are some of the pieces that we see in failover, right? So um, also this is the, most of this stuff is on your guys' side. So Mike, I'll turn it over to you. What are the uptime, you know, what are you seeing for uptime and you know, what, what does that seamless failover look like for you? So, um, you know, the, the uptime is, is, you know, obviously mission critical, as you said, um, keeping applications online. And our, our failover service is seamless. So the goal is the, for the end user not to notice anything. Um, in the case of retail or, you know, uh, let's, let's uh, say food, 
restaurants, um, they're constantly relying on their, on their POS systems. Um, and if they can't process a credit card, you know, to, to finish the transaction, which most transactions are these days, then they can't, uh, you know, sell their services or their, um, uh, their food. And, and, you know, we've done this many, many times from a failover perspective and customers routinely um, deploy this in that scenario. And we've gotten many comments from customers that, you know, none of the end users at the stores had any idea what was going on. And once that, that primary circuit came back up, it would automatically fail over. So there's configurations that are built in that can automate that whole process and make it very seamless. Yeah, no, no, for sure. And also anything to add there on, on uptime or whatnot? I want to talk about the troubleshooting piece, right? That 24-7, 365. But is there anything you have to add there? As far as the um, failover, also from a government's perspective, uh, we have a lot of public safety agencies that use dual carrier set up, in, especially in vehicles. So um, there, there could be we can have smart WAN selection set up on the router and, and it's easily set up in NetCloud. And um, at any given time, it just picks up the optimal carrier and it seamlessly switches over from carrier to carrier. And like you said, it's the, the police officer in the vehicle doesn't even know what's happening. It's just two active, active connections. And it's a, it's a really powerful experience to really optimize the, um, the failover. Yeah, no. So that's where I wanted to go next, right? As we proceed forward. Okay, so it's one thing to have that connection, but uh, I think somebody even asked it, how safe is that connection? Uh, what's the layer of security across those connections? Um, you know, uh, is it zero trust capable? Uh, that You know, that's the big uh, go-to term in today's uh, security market. Doesn't matter if you're in a commercial, pub sec, nonprofit, or enterprise 500. Uh, everybody has the same how do I keep this connected? How do I keep people out of my network I don't want? And how do I uh, provide access to my network where needed without creating uh, back doors and security issues? Um, so on our side of it, we leverage, uh, we being RCN, but Cradle Point's product leverages the cloud managed solution called NetCloud Manager and all the security platforms that I mentioned. It's a single pane of glass, single dashboard for management, and it allows you to check, manage, configure, troubleshoot, operate. And that troubleshooting is as little as what's my SSID and why can't I connect to my Wi-Fi to as great as being able to connect to LAN clients, right? Using LAN manager uh, to connect to clients that are using that cradle point. So anything using uh, that cradle point as a hub of connectivity, I as a network operator or somebody that's trying to help somebody in the field can leverage my cradle point connection to basically create a remote desktop of sorts. And so there's power there from a remote management standpoint. And then everything that you can do at the cradle point locally, and then some more on the security side can be done through that dashboard remotely, securely, over 256 bit tunnel uh, with all the standard enterprise uh, required security solutions you would expect. So. Uh, I will put it this way, whether it's a CGIS compliance, a on-prem compliance, or it's your standard enterprise security zero trust um, man mindset and mandate that we're seeing. Sorry about that. We're able to provide all of that. Again, the options within the cradle point are there. And if you would like to learn more, I'd love to provide a NetCloud demo, uh, depending on where you're from, me or one of my colleagues and our engineer sits down with you and we can show you what those security options are, but it's extremely robust and it follows suit with everything the federal and Fortune 500 communities expect of, uh, their, you know, the, of their appliances. The cellular side of it, there's multiple ways uh, to go about that, right? So whether it's over a 4G connection, a 5G connection, that doesn't matter. Cradle Point's gonna use whatever pipe is available and has 4G, 5G failback, right? So you're gonna have a 5G device that has the ability to go 4G and you're gonna have a 4G device that has the ability to add a 5G modem down the line. Did we lose Ben again? <laughs> like we did um, and still going yeah uh, and I you know I'd like to from a security perspective I'd like to throw one thing out there and this is an analogy that um, 
that I heard recently um, as it relates to security from a, a Crail Point perspective. And, and it's this, when you go into a hotel or any type of building or anything like that, um, and this is around NetCloud Exchange um, and the Zero Trust. Um, if you go into a building, you take an elevator, you push the button, you go to the floor that you want, or you, know, you could go to any other floor um, if you wanted to. In, in now more and more today, you're getting the, in the case of a hotel, you get a card and you can, uh, to get to your floor, you actually have to pass it over a, a secure um, pad and it takes you to your floor, but you can also go to other floors today. Now, what we do is, uh, from a security perspective, is we don't allow anybody to go to, to any other floor except their own. So in the case of, you know, from a security perspective, if the customer uh, wants to designate, uh, you know, based on policy uh, where they want their employees to be able to access in terms of files, they can designate that over uh, NetCloud Exchange. And so they can only get to those uh, areas. So if that individual or area was hacked, it can only stay within that one area. It cannot go out into the whole network. Um, and then from a from an end user perspective, we recently acquired a company called Ericom, and, and they call, they have a, a solution ZT Edge, and basically it's uh, zero trust, um, uh, and everything is brokered in the cloud, and and the and the end user um, has to go through this cloud, which has no client on the desktop, um, and basically um, you know broker the connection to whatever site they're going. And, and what it doesn't allow them to do is click on any type of malicious links or anything like that. So it inspects it in the cloud and, and protects that end user. And if they, if it senses, uh, you know, a, a malicious link, it will not let an end user uh, connect to that link and, and download potis, uh, potential malicious uh, software. So um, we've got a lot of, you know, like I said, uh, and like Ben commented, um, our security is very strong and it's, it's very focused and, um, you know, we're optimized for 5G, um, all of our devices and, and our solutions. And, and quite honestly, we've, we've come from, you know, our developers come from the cellular words, world, so they know it really well. And, and even the firmware on our modems is, is uh, uh, tweaked, so to speak, so that it has a solid and secure connection to that uh, tower. Um, which also allows for a more steady and predictable connection. Uh, ben, go ahead. You want to take? No, over? no, yeah. Just talking a little bit about. Hey, can you can, can you hear me? I'll start there. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right. So uh, I, I thought we were good and switched back over to our local internet, and I was wrong. So um, anyway, uh, one of the ways that we help, right? So we talked about the security piece, and Mike, I, I appreciate you going through that. One of the ways that we help at RCN is our dedicated twenty four seven three sixty five knock under our tech lab services. And so what that allows us to do is we leverage everything that the cradle point brings to the table and our uh, 5G certified technicians that, that work inside of that team and then provide you that layer support. So if you're a small, medium business with limited IT or limited, just like my parents, they own a, they own a restaurant chain out in a couple of restaurant locations, I should say, I say chain, but multiple sites uh, out in Idaho, right? It's just my parents. They don't have a network person. I end up being their network person. And so after hours when I'm not working here and I get a call that the POS system is down, I leverage the cradle points that I bought for them four years ago to be able to remote in and handle those point of sale terminals. Because the 1-800 number on the POS terminal, uh, there's multiple acronyms that POS stands for, but uh, in this in this instance, I'll just put it this way, dialing in doesn't get you much. With that cradle point, I'm able to remotely access, monitor, and fix. Well, our NOC team does that for thousands of endpoints nationwide, and in some cases, globally, uh, every single day, leveraging the power of what cradle point brings to the table because of what cradle point is able to provide us from speed, feed, and throughput, and through a secure and connected environment that your team manages in partnership with us, acting whether we're as your consultant or if we're doing the majority of your network backlog. So moving forward, what are some of those operation center pieces? I mentioned some of them in passing, right? For us, we believe it's cost efficient. It's $10 for our basic plan. It's $45 or more uh, for our plus plan. And there's a couple of things in between. But the point is, is per month, per year, 
or as an upfront 36 or 60 month contract license, service license, you have the ability to have somebody work for you for less than say $360 a site who will provide proactive management, carrier support, RMA support, tier one through three, cradle point help desk support. That all comes included from RCN when we deploy with you for these type of solutions. And again, it's all a cart to an extent. You pick the flavor that's best for you, but we leverage Cradle Point to deliver on that solution. We have another poll. I would love it if you guys would be willing to jump in, uh, but what would prohibit you from considering switching to a wireless uh, for your primary internet, right? So not just failover, but primary internet. Uh, a lot of people uh, I talk to, right? They're already happy with their current provider. They haven't seen costs go up, so why change? Um, they, they don't have great cell coverage areas. Cost, they think that cellular is more expensive than fiber connectivity. Um, downtime and things like that, they, they worry about that. Those are things that we could absolutely help guide you through and, and show you that the cost of the endpoint, that our ability to provide a uh, sub $100 a month failover solution that includes data, right? So think about this. Uh, we can provide you that same, uh, those speeds, the up the link, the downlink, the security, uh, the knock support. In some situations, for as little as 60 or $70 a month. In other situations where it's 5G optimized FWA, for as little as $154 a month, you get that fiber-like speed on a cellular endpoint that includes network support. So three products in, in bundled in one, for half the cost that most of our fiber customers are, are paying. And for you folks in the Rose rural areas, I come from Podunk Nowhere, Idaho. I love it gloriously. I feel Idaho is my favorite place on earth in a lot of ways. There's not much out there when it comes to cellular. And uh, I, I know of three uh, very large uh, dairy companies that if you've ever had yogurt uh, that starts with a G or a Y, uh, you, you, it came from there. And a lot of people would tell you there's no cellular there and they run their entire facility of over 1500 employees uh, off of cellular today because fiber was too expensive to get out there. It was in the millions of dollars to trench, but we have two redundant carriers built at those plants and they do everything they need over a cellular source for less than 300 a month. Um, so keep that in mind if that's something we can help you uh, navigate. We've definitely seen some huge cost reductions in FWA plans from the carriers, Yep, especially on the public sector yeah. side. If cost scares you, please, um, after this meeting, hit us up, ask us for more information. I think you'd be highly surprised. Our enterprise solution with fiber-like speeds, with better uptime and better reliability, in my opinion, better support, uh, you, I think you'd be surprised what we can deliver in, in the Cradle Point RCM package. So moving forward, what, what helps us do that? And a lot of it comes down to our ability to vendor consolidate. By leveraging our partnership with Cradle Point and the other peripheral OEMs, right? The, the antenna manufacturers, the endpoint, the POE injector manufacturers, because we're an elite partner or a diamond partner with so many of those folks, we can help consult, design, and procure a lot of those solutions on your behalf and provide you, you know, our our years of experience as a team, reducing those costs, which also reduces our deployment time and our costs of ownership long-term. And that's the RCN mindset, right? Providing a consolidated ecosystem that supports not just your design and implementation, but the install deployment and support years to come all wrapped up into one. So now that's, that's it. I know we're getting close to the top of the hour. We truly appreciate everybody that was willing to stay in, especially through some of my own technical failover difficulties. Uh, I would not have been able to stay on this if it wasn't for Cradle Point today. So I uh, truly appreciate the hardware you guys uh, produce and the SIM card from RCN Artec that's on board here. Um, with that being said, are there any questions that anybody has? Feel free to put them in the chat. We'll take a couple minutes to review that. If not, uh, we'll, we'll jump off of here. But before we do that, as the questions come in, Mike, Osa, any closing thoughts on, on FWA as primary, failover, or security or cost? Any of those four categories? Because those seem to be the ones that came up most today. Osa, do you want to go first? 
Uh, sure. Just a closing thought. I think we just had an, a really exciting point in time where uh, there are, are really a lot of customers that truly can consider um, fixed wireless access for a primary connectivity. So, and it's only going to get better from here. So I am just excited uh, for what is to come. Yeah, me too. Thanks, Osa. Uh, I'm equally excited too, in terms of where the technology is going and, and in particular, you know, where Cradle Point is going and we continue to you know, uh, build on what we have today and, and there's more coming down the pipe that, that uh, will be revealed. Um, but I do want to take a minute to talk about uh, Ben and his team. And I want to give you an example. Ben's, Ben's helped me tremendously on a recent uh, uh, customer uh, that we've been uh, talking, discussing with and, and have deployed some, some of their cradle points. Um, it's a national chain that everybody would know um and they've got over four or five i think it's 500 stores um they've deployed about 32 stores to date with cradle points but in this time that they've deployed it they've had they've had three uh sites that had severe issues in terms of not being able to get the best connectivity and they were getting maybe three to five meg down it was it was it was uh not good at all and um and i asked ben to come in and take a look at it and, and, and Ben did a, a site survey for me. He, he and his team jumped all over it. And what it ended up being was it was a carrier issue. And what he was able to do was, uh, number one, go in and make sure that the device, which was an 1850 um, indoor unit, was placed in the correct area, um, also attached an antenna to it, uh, and ran it up to the roof to improve the signal. And then he tested all the carriers. Um, and, and the customer wasn't aware of that. And, and we came up with a different carrier, quite honestly. Um, and, but had I not used uh, uh, Ben's services and the way that they uh, jumped all over it, um, we'd probably be stuck where we are. As a result, you know, all three sites are fixed and you know, we're looking at additional sites to expand up to that 500. And you know, so I'm grateful to Ben and his team uh, they're a great partner for Cradle Point with us, uh, and I love working side by side. Um, and so if you're considering uh, RCN, if you're not a current customer, if you are, stick with them um, because they've got a great team uh, to be able to, you know, be, bring you the services that you require. And they know Cradle Point inside and out. So uh, really uh, gratefully, you get, uh, Ben and your team. Yeah, Mike, I appreciate that. Thank you very much, sir. I, we, we appreciate the partnership, and we'll we'll do our best to continue uh supporting both you and Osa as things move forward. Um, there is a free gift. So going back to what was asked in the, uh, uh, in the chat a little bit ago, um, right? Uh, you can book a meeting using the link in the chat. You'll see that in your chat and receive a free uh, $95 Warby Parker gift card. Megan, do I get to do that? Like I'm a Warby Parker guy. That, <laughs> that was my customer when I was at, uh, when I was at Cradle Point. So oh, yeah. there you go, Mike. So I had no yeah. idea. There you go. There, there's some things, uh, some free, uh, free uh, activity there. But Osa, before we go forward, uh, as people are clicking on that link, anything for you to add on your side uh, before we go to this last slide? Um, no, I just want to vouch for the knock personally, from my personal experience. And Ben didn't ask me to do this, by the way, but we uh, we got a request from a large Texas city, one of the largest cities in Texas, by the way. And uh, they had a, a very urgent uh, public Wi-Fi project. And we brought in RCN and um, Ben worked on the deployment alongside with the with the knock and um, we just really needed everyone on board monitoring things, making sure that they had constant uptime. And um, we really had an incredibly impressed customer from the experience. They were really, really nervous going into it. They had not heard of RCN or the knock in the past, um, but they just ended up having an amazing experience. No, hey, thank you, Osa. I appreciate that. And honestly, our our partnership with both of you, we, we couldn't do what we do with our customers uh, if it wasn't our customers together, right? You, your guys' ability to move quickly, efficiently, help support us, um, provide information when, when it's behind the curtain, uh, if you will, of, of Cradle Point. Uh, you guys are some of the best we have, and that's one of the reasons why we asked you all to be here. So I appreciate your guys' partnership as well. And I, I, tr I don't think I could do what I do if it wasn't for you guys. 
Um, last poll, uh, what solution did you find most interesting today? And John, there's a Warby Parker gift card for you. So if, if that's what you're looking for, it's not Amazon, but it is Warby. <laughs> so, uh, FWA is the primary internet, failover is a backup, or knock as a managed service for IT support. Uh, if you could be willing to select one of those answers for what you thought, uh, whether we touched on it more and it interests you uh, to talk to us more later, or if uh, it's something that just for your own business needs, you feel is most pertinent for how you would like to move forward. Uh, these answers really allow us to do a better job uh, on these webinars and your engagement allows us to uh, make sure that the next webinar is done that much better. I can tell you, uh, Osa and I did one of these like a year and a half ago and this is uh, night and day better than what it was a year and a half ago, minus the connectivity issues. But that's, uh, you know, life happens and Murphy's a heck of a guy. So awesome. We appreciate everybody. Um, as you fill out that last couple of poll questions, thanks for attending and have a great day. We're right at that top of the hour. So uh, we took you to the very end, to the very finish line. Mike, Osa, again, thank you for your guys' time. Have a good one. And everybody else, I'll stay on for a few minutes for Q&A. Uh, Y'all have a great day.